Thank you so much, Melissa, for, and we have five minutes and 58 seconds uh, to open it up for questions and, and comments before we move to the next speaker. The most sobering, Jeff, I can see your hand up. Are there big differences in this vulnerability across the high income countries? You know, for example, we think that um, Scandinavia takes better care of the, the basic needs of everybody. So you would think that there would be less uh, desperation and uh, desperate resort to prostitution. So does that show up? Is, is there evidence of the cross country differences of uh, rates of prostitution and does it show that social policies can can really make a, a big difference? It seems very plausible that it does. Uh, countries' prostitution policies make a huge difference, yes. I don't know about the class, although I'll say a couple things about that, but when you have a policy that criminalizes the demand for sex, as Sweden did in 1999, Norway, Finland, uh, Norway, Iceland, Israel, France, Canada, eight countries in all have passed these laws aimed at going for the root cause of this institution that's so harmful. It, it has driven down sex trafficking in, in, in Sweden is where the longest term study has been done. And we know from a, school, a study out of the London School of Economics by Cho, Dreher, and Neumeier that across 100, more than 150 countries, whenever prostitution is legal, trafficking increases. It's a very strong result. Now, the, the question about social services is really important. Right now, we are interviewing women in Stockholm, asking them about the quality of social... These are women in the sex trade who've had porn made of them. And we're asking them what social service agency they've been to, were the police helpful, was uh, housing authority helpful, were other NGOs helpful, and we're going to learn a lot, I think, 